Item number 30, which is a brief presentation from staff and approval of an ordinance amending the city code uh, regarding coal tar pavement products. Thank you. This is the third in a series of three public hearings on this proposal uh, for a ban on coal tar based pavement sealants. Um, the industry has been invited tonight, and there are representatives from both the local and national industry here. We also have representatives, scientists and engineers from the Watershed Protection and Development Review Department, from the Legal Department, and from the Health Department to answer any questions that you might have. I want to talk to you about how we got here, why we think a ban is appropriate, and why we're targeting the coal tar-based products. Just a little bit of history first. Council first asked us to evaluate whether a regulation would be appropriate in June of 03, and at that time we asked Council to give us some more time to do some research so that we could provide a very defensible recommendation to you. Uh, we, on April of 2004, we contacted all the local retailers, producers, and applicators and requested a voluntary ban on the coal tar based sealants. And then in, uh, we completed the rest of our studies in October of this year. Council Member Leffingwell asked us to begin the public process on the ban. Just first, what are pavement sealants? These are surface finishes that are applied to parking lots and to driveways to prolong the life of the parking lot and to create a very homogenous appearance on the parking lot that can be easily restriped. Uh, there's two basic types, coal tar based and asphalt based. Um, they, there's a reapplication rate of every, anywhere from two to five years, which is part of the problem. These, these products wear off of the parking lot surfaces, they braid off in, in particles and find their way down into our streams. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. What are PAHs? This is the pollutant of concern that we have with these particular products. PAHs stands for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. That's the last time I'll say that. They result from the combustion of organic materials, many, many sources, exhaust, fuel spills, automotive products of all types, barbecue, smoking, anything where organic materials are burned. Uh, many of these um, uh, PAHs are carcinogenic and toxic. They, we find them in the sediment, typically, as opposed to the water, because they absorb very strongly onto the solid particles. This is a map that just shows you all the places in Austin that we have sampled for PAHs. These are some of the concentrations of PAHs that first made us start concentrating on, the, on these pollutants. In the 90s, we got an EPA grant to study contaminated sediments, and these are some of the very high concentrations that we found in case you can't see, that's East Bolden Creek, Waller Creek, Onion Creek, and Barton Creek on your far right. Uh, total PAH is, um, is on, on the y-axis there. And at the time that we collected these samples, we really didn't know exactly how to interpret them because there were no known state or federal standards to tell us just how bad are these levels. But if you'll look in this particular graph at the line that really appears at the very bottom down there, that is the protective or contaminant level that was ultimately um, developed uh, that tells you at what point do you expect to start seeing an impact on aquatic life. And as you can see, the levels that we were seeing in some of our streams are much, much higher than that uh, level of concern. If you look on the far right, that's the, those are the concentrations that we were seeing in Barton Creek. And of course, we were very concerned about those because that is an area that is immediately above the pool. Um, and so we continue to go back and look at that area, and we continue to get high concentrations. Um, and so we started to go up and down Barton Creek to try to trace the source of those sediments. We found some other hot spots in the creek, but we ultimately landed back up in a dry tributary not too far above the pool, and we started taking samples up into that tributary. And as we went up the tributary, this is a graph that shows you, in general, all the places that we sampled in that tributary. The two bars in the bottom are below Barton Springs Pool and in Barton Springs. The third bar to the head and to the right is what we saw right immediately above the pool. And then as we traveled on up into the tributary, the concentrations got higher and higher. If you look at the, y, the y-axis here, that is on a log scale. So the concentrations are increasing very rapidly as we went up the tributary. When we had that data just from the tributary, we started contacting our colleagues from across the country to try to get some 
they had, or were, find out if other people or other municipalities, other researchers were seeing these kinds of concentrations. And essentially nobody could really, uh, nobody had comparable data to this because most people were not looking for, set, for PAHs and sediments in small streams. And nobody could really account for these very high concentrations. We know that at the top of this tributary was a parking lot. And we know all the typical sources of PAHs in parking lots. Motor oil, automobile exhaust, automotive fluids of all type, asphalt itself. But we know what the concentrations of PAHs look like from those sources. And none of them could justify these very high concentrations that we were seeing. We went on up into the parking lot and started looking at the parking lot. Of course, we had been doing that for quite a while. But, and we even knew about uh, uh, pavement sealants at that time. But one of the investigators in the watershed department had one of those aha moments looking at pavement sealants when he realized that so not all pavement sealants are alike and that some of them, in fact, contain coal tar, a very, very potent source of PAHs. So we went and the first thing we did was to sample a lot of other parking lots around town. We sampled the kind of dirt and unconsolidated material around the parking lots and found that indeed in all of them we were seeing enormously high concentrations of PAHs and ultimately went right up and scraped the material right off of the parking lot and saw, if you can see, the very top number there is 50,000 parts per million. So we were seeing um, scrapings, the stuff coming right off the parking lot in the 25 or 30,000 parts per million, sort of unheard of um, types of concentrations just in the urban environment. We um, contacted our colleagues, our water quality professionals across the country to find out who else was looking at these parking lot sealants and what kind of literature was out there. And frankly, it was on nobody's radar screen, not other water quality professionals and, professionals and not EPA. We went right out to the hardware stores and started picking this stuff uh, off the shelf of, of your major hardware stores. And this is, we, we knew, we were concerned about the coal tar based ones, but we wanted to understand about the alternative products as well, the ones that just are asphalt based. And this graph here shows you what we found when we analyzed both those types of products. The one, the, the blue data points on your left are all the data that we saw when we analyzed asphalt sealants. And again, that's a log scale on your y-axis, and, and all of the asphalt-based products contained less than 1% of PAH. The yellow or green data points there on the right bar, those are all the products that we sampled or that we analyzed that contain coal tar. And you can see that some of those products had as much as anywhere close to 50%, or maybe 40%, that is, PAH right in the product. On the photograph at left, that's just a picture of how they apply these sealants to parking lots. At that point in time, um, we began a collaborative study with the United States Geological Survey where we uh, took some lots out at the old Mueller Airport and we um, applied the asphalt-based sealants to some of them and the coal tar based sealants to the others of them. And then we also uh, had some unsealed parking lots out there and did a little artificial rain experiment on the parking lots after they had been sealed with these materials. And this graph here shows you what we saw uh, comparatively in the particles in the runoff from those various surfaces. At the, the, on the y-axis is total PAHs, again a log scale, so that goes all the way from 10 to 10,000. And you can see that starting on your right, the, run, the particles in the runoff from the unsealed parking lots were all below 100 parts per million. The asphalt lots, the, or the lots that were sealed with asphalt-based sealants, were all under 1,000 parts per million. And the coal tar-based were um, some of them up to 10,000 parts per million.